Come meet everybody. Name you, the group or organization you represent in this case. Lesbians and gays support the minors. Quite, absolutely. Now, I'm hoping you can clear something up for me about lesbians. Not now, boy. It's something I was told in the covered market. Let's now, get settled in first, shall we? Welcome to Kermit Uncut. There's a new movie opening in the UK today. I'm sure you know about it. You will have seen the posters and the adverts. It's called Pride. And it stars, amongst other people, Paddy Considine. Now, I'll be reviewing the film in full on the show I do on Radio 5 Live with Simon Mayer. But suffice to say, I really liked it. And one of the things I really liked about it was Paddy Considine. Now, recently, I was doing sort of top five revenge movies, and I was talking about Dead Man's Shoes. When you think of Paddy Considine's films, which have sort of won accolades, you think of Dead Man's Shoes and In America and Cinderella Man. And, of course, he won many awards for helming Tyrannosaur. He's now, I think, shaping up as a really well-respected director. So rather than doing a top five Paddy Considine movies, I wanted to do an alternative top five, a list of the top five Paddy Considine movies that would probably get overlooked in a list of Paddy Considine's top five films. Got that? Good. At number five, A Room for Romeo Brass, an early collaboration between Paddy Considine and Shane Meadows. For me, this was the first time I'd ever seen Paddy Considine. I remember reviewing that film for Sight and Sound magazine and being really struck by his performance. I mean, it's classic mercurial Considine. One moment he's, he's fragile and awkward, and the next moment he's sort of bolshy, then he's friendly, but then bullying. And then, very suddenly, rather scary. It's a terrific performance. It was the first time he caught my eye. And I think that film still holds up really well. At number four, a movie which critics were rather sniffy about, or, to be more precise, they were rather sniffy about its audience. The film I'm talking about is Now Is Good. It's a story about a young girl with a terrible illness, and Paddy Constantine plays the father, struggling to come to terms with her situation. It's very much in the mould of The Fault in Our Stars, or, or perhaps the recent movie, If I Stay. For me, what made it work was that although it was a, a very sort of formulaic, romanticised story, it actually had integrity, it had heart, it had its feet on the ground. It, it took a subject that could be totally melodramatic and kind of downplayed it. And the key to that was Paddy Considine. At number three in my alternative top five Paddy Considine movies, 24-hour party people. Now, I know loads of people love that movie, but they don't necessarily think of it as being a Paddy Considine film. Of course, he plays Rob Gretton, but he's just one of a, a huge ensemble cast, so many people in that film. I think he's great. I think his performance is really well observed. And the film itself is terrific. I mean, I was in Manchester for some of that period. I met some of the people portrayed on screen. And it has that brilliant mix of reality and fantasy. It pushes things just far enough. And it's really funny. Into the top two. And at number two, a real oddity. Le Donc and Scorsese. A really odd experimental film put together in, I think, four or five days about these two guys getting themselves together to play a gig. You never really have any idea where it's going or why it's going there. I've seen it a couple of times. I don't fully understand it. I'm not even sure that I fully like it. But I kind of admire it in a strange Paddy Considine kind of way. Which brings me to the number one spot and the most wrongly overlooked Paddy Considine performance in a film which, frankly, very few people saw, which is a real shame because I really rather liked it. I'm talking, of course, about Stephen Woolley's Stoned, a movie about the last days of Brian Jones. In that film, Paddy Considine plays Frank Thorogood, the builder, nominally, who sort of moves in with Brian and somehow becomes his alter ego, his nemesis. I think Paddy Considine is terrific in that movie, and I think the movie itself really holds up well. Why didn't it get the audience it deserved? Well, partly because it's not a rock and roll movie in the traditional sense. It's more of a kind of Joe Losey movie. It's a movie which is made by Steve Woolley, not really looking to make a pop film. He's looking to make a film about people going mad in an enclosed space. I think it's really good. It's got a terrific performance by David Morrissey. But the real standout for me is Paddy Considine. That is my number one overlooked alternative Paddy Considine performance. Now, of course, when you glance down Paddy Considine's CV, it's so extensive, it's so varied, it's so diverse. I mean, I'm sure there's loads of stuff in there which I've overlooked. What is it? What are the titles that I've missed? Which are the ones which really work for you? I want to just leave you with a Paddy Constantine story, a personal Paddy Constantine story. I ended up a year or so ago doing a concert on stage with the uh, City of Birmingham Symphony Orchestra and Paddy Constantine. And uh, it happened to be 
on the occasion of my birthday, I was turning 50, and at the end of the concert, Paddy Constein came to me with a, a box, a, a pink sparkly box, and he said, I've brought you a present, and I mm, couldn't tell what it was, and I opened it up. You know what it was? It was a face cast of Linda Blair used to do the demon makeup on The Exorcist. Now that's what I call a present.